A full 13 game slate for tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball. And I think at least a decent number of ways you can play things, both at pitcher and for stacking. We're going to break down the options for pitcher, the routes you can take, uh, which guys I like most within those specific routes, and my top plays for tonight in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com, or FanDuel Research, I guess I should say. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research here to break down Friday's 13-game main slate with locks at for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today speaking of fanduel research and that uh the free roll the link for the free roll is now available at fanduel.com slash research it revolves around saturday's main slate the english premier league as they return to the pitch lock is at 10 a.m eastern on saturday running these free rolls every week and now through the end of the nfl season to celebrate the transition to fanduel research and to thank all the loyal number fire users to get the link and to enter Go to FanDuel.com slash research and look for the story in the front page. Eligibility restrictions apply. Again, FanDuel.com slash research. If you don't know how to play EPL, uh, we talked about the betting side of things with Austin Cass on covering the spread yesterday. And there is a link to the EPL helper for this week in the uh, in the free roll post over on FanDuel Research. So again, FanDuel.com slash research to find the link to the free roll. Tonight's slate, 13 games, locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. Only weather notes for today. There is a slight chance of rain in Chicago for the White Sox and the Brewers. I wouldn't expect it to impact play, but they say should be good to go there. Rain chance is slightly higher in Kansas City for the Royals and the Cardinals. Also 92 degrees, so upgrade batters there, assuming they're able to play. That game for the Royals and the Cardinals. We'll dig into what all this means and much more here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We are getting close now to NFL season, less than one month away from our first preview podcast of the year. Uh, again, twice weekly podcast for the NFL side of things, along with the solo shot and along with USC for select events via Austin Swaim, all right here in the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get that. Search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And don't forget, the solo shot also goes up on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate, Blake Snell checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,000, followed by Corbin Burns at 10.8. We have Luis Castillo at $10,600 with Justin Verlander at 10.5. Andrew Abbott's salary is $10,000 with Lance Lynn at 99. Kyle Gibson checks in at 96 with Jose Barrios at 95. Johan Oviedo is 93 with Chris Sale at 9,000. Tarek Skubal, Christopher Sanchez, Charlie Morton, Paul Blackburn, John Gray and Reed Detmers are the others at $8,000 or higher. I know by now you're probably sick of me telling you to use Lance Lynn because it has not gone, gone well. And I assure you, I'm sick of telling you as well. But he is at home tonight and facing the Rockies. And his salary is pretty reasonable at $9,900. So I feel like despite the fact he has burned us before, we kind of got to do it once again. Lynn's first two starts to the Dodgers have been okay. Let him three home runs in the first start. Not ideal, but those are the lone three runs of the night for him. In the second game, let up one run across six innings. He had strikeout totals of seven and six in those two starts. And the reason I've been on Lynn for the time that I have been is the strikeouts. He's been sprinkling his curveball back in across his past 10 starts. And in those 10 starts, he does have a 30% strikeout rate with a 3.53 skill interactive ERA. So he does have issues, but his 5.37 ERA feels a bit fluky for sure. Maybe Lynn just has issues when he doesn't get strikeouts, but he does have upside. He does get those strikeouts. He had 11 strikeouts in one game, 16 in another. And that's really tough to turn down when it's offered to you at a salary below $10,000. Based on the Rockies here, they are brutal with an 80 WRC plus against righties with a 26% strikeout rate, poor power numbers. They may not be able to punish Lynn as much as others have. And that's why I want to go here. I think he's a really good play, but I also understand if you don't want to deal with him once again, it hasn't worked out. So I get it. If you don't want to go there, very fair. I understand. But for me personally, he will be my top guy for tonight. Among the higher salary guys above Lynn, 
I think it's pretty tough to decide between Blake Snell and Corbin Burns. I like Snell more in general, but he's also playing a low strikeout offense. Burns is not. He's more of a neutral strikeout matchup, and he's also been pretty solid recently. So I think the matchup will be the decider for me. So I'm going to go Burns number two behind Lynn. Burns now is also $200 lower than Snell, um, and that does help. Never hurts to save $200 in salary. Over the past 13 starts, Burns has started to cut back in his slider a bit and throwing more cutters instead. In that time, he has a 3.05 ERA. His strikeout rate is 28%, and he's allowing just a 28% hard hit rate. Snell is excelling in that area, too. So it's good to see both Snell and Burns checking the same box with the limited hard contact. He's facing the White Sox tonight, and the offense didn't get decimated as much as the pitching staff did at the trade deadline, but they still have an 89 WRC plus against righties. Their play discipline numbers are pretty poor, which means they have short plate appearances. And that's one advantage that that Burns has over Snell. Burns, in his most relevant sample, averages 3.90 pitches per plate appearance, whereas Snell is at 4.34. And he's facing a team that has longer plate appearances despite striking out less. So I do have Snell with a higher strikeout projection for Burns or than for Burns, but I see more paths to a disappointing night for him than for Burns, and both these guys have great upside. So when choosing between the two, it's tough, for sure, because I do like both. But I prefer Burns if choosing. Uh, the strikeout projection differential is a half strikeout. I think I have Snell at 7.5 and Burns at 7 flat. So it's not a huge discrepancy, but there is enough there where um, I can see why you'd want to go Snell. But personally, all things considered, I'm going to go Burns 2 over uh, Snell behind Lynn. If you're looking for a value play, you have to take on some risk tonight. For Tara Scooble, that risk is pitch count. He's coming off an injury. He has not hit 90 pitches yet, and there's no real reason to push him either. But they did throw 80, have him out there for 88 pitches last time out. And even if I project Scooble to go back down to 85 this time, he's still at least interesting against the Red Sox. That's all because Scooble has looked really, really good so far this year. He's made six starts. He has a 12.7% swinging strike rate, which is up from 11.7% in his breakout last year. His strikeout rate is 31% with a 4% walk rate. And those are all really great numbers. And Scooble's also getting more ground balls. Now, I'm not sure if that part will stick, but if he can add ground balls to his current profile, he could be really, really fun. And the most recent outing for, for Scooble was against the Rays. He held them to one unearned run across five and a third innings. He had six strikeouts there. He had nine strikeouts against the Giants, 82 pitches earlier on. So if the Tigers do let Scoobal get his pitch count in the low 90s, I think we'll notice how well he's pitching right now. Now, the Red Sox, not an easy matchup. They have a 115 at WRC plus against lefties. They have a 22% strikeout rate, which is low. The walk rate is high. This is really just a bet on Scoobal continuing to pitch well, which he's done so far. It is risky because there's not a lot of margin for error with a low pitch count guy, but... I don't think it's the worst idea in the world to salary 88. So I think that Scooble, at least worth digging into for tonight. So to me, top pitching options, Lynn one, Burns two, Snell three, and then Scooble being the top value at $8,800. There is some incentive to, to spend down a pitcher, which might be why I decided to go Lynn over Burns and Snell. And that incentive is that I do like some stacks of the Braves. Padres and Dodgers and all those teams carry some decently high salaries. So maybe we want to save some a bit and go Lance Lynn instead of splurging all the way up for Burns and for Snell. Braves lead things off here in the stacking section. They're facing Tyler McGill. McGill has made just one start since coming back up from the, the minors and it didn't seem like his biggest issues were fixed. I think it means we should stack the Braves here. When McGill got demoted, he was letting up a lot of hard contact at the time. His hard hit rate for the season is 42%, which is above the league average, and it had been trending pretty aggressively the wrong way in the final starts leading into his demotion. In the first start back, McGill let up 12 hard hit balls and three barrels on 20 balls in play. That is a 60% hard hit rate with a 15% barrel rate. The Orioles were the opponent in that game, hit a couple home runs, they scored five runs on him, and McGill's numbers in AAA were pretty rough too. Strikeouts were down there. His results were not great. So it's difficult to ask McGill to come back up and face a lineup like this. And 
come out smelling pretty. The Braves have a 121 WRC plus against righties with a 222 ISO. So I think we need to go in on them here and stack them against McGill tonight. And when doing so, we don't need to worry too much about platoon splits because McGill, his numbers against righties and lefties largely even. The one difference is he does generate more ground balls from righties than lefties. So I wouldn't overweigh that personally. But again, tiebreaker if you're looking at Matt Olson, Sean Murphy, stuff like that. Uh, always the the constant dilemma for MLB DFS. Uh, I think that, or usually both, you know, why not? Uh, but we can play things pretty straight up here and use our favorite bats against righties for tonight. As for the second stack, it'll be the Padres. They are in Arizona where the roof will be closed for tonight, which is a downgrade to batters, but elevation there is still good. That does still benefit batters, and I want to be on the Padres here. They're facing Ryan Nelson, and we talked about Nelson a couple times in the stacking section, and he has at times made me regret doing that. But more recently, his velocity has been down, and it's led to a slight dip in his results. This has been happening for the past nine starts for Nelson. His ERA is 4.97, and that number is high primarily due to two blow-up starts, but he let up five runs in another. He has let up 11 total home runs across nine games. His hard hit rate is 41% with a 49 or a 40, 49% fly ball rate. He's letting up all that hard contact while getting a strikeout just 16% of the time. So that's not the worst profile. Um, you know, you can get by on that, but it's also definitely not great. Now, this Padres offense is definitely sputtering right now. They've had a really bad week. Their WRC plus against righties is down to 103 with a 176 ISO. They are not now what they once were, but I'm still on them here and do still feel good about stacking the Padres in this matchup. One thing I do love about the Padres, we actually can get some value via Gmon Choi, finally uh, back in the lineup and kind of fun to see him playing pretty well. I know the, the batting average is aggressively low, but in 71 plate appearances against righties, his ISO is 288. His barrel rate is, I think, 20% with a lot of hard contact. Now, Choi does leave games early for pinch hitters sometimes, and Arizona's bullpen does have two lefties in it. So don't go bananas with Choi, but... I think he's very much a viable value play for $2,500 if we're trying to get access to this uh, this Padres lineup, which does have lower salaries than they used to have, but it's still not like it's easy to fully stack this team without spending down a pitcher. So Jimon Choi, a fun value for tonight. Our final stack, as mentioned, is the Dodgers. They're facing Austin Gomber, who has started to look a lot better recently, which makes me very happy because I wanted to do well. I used him as a pitcher a couple years ago when he had that hot streak. So I wanted to get back to being that version of Austin Gomber. I just think some of the underlying numbers are still a bit concerning, which allows me to still cautiously stack against him. Gomber has a streak now of going at least six innings in seven consecutive starts. He has allowed more than three earned runs just once and never more than four. And he's faced some pretty stiff competition in that time. So I wanted to dig into those seven starts specifically to see what the underlying numbers say. Typically, I wouldn't do this because it's cherry picking. Uh, but like we're cherry picking the opposite direction where I'm trying to find like his best sample and justify stacking against him. I think his most relevant sample is actually a bit larger than that across his. Um, uh, the most relevant sample for Gomber I have is 12 starts with more sliders and fewer changeups. So a bit larger than the seven start sample. But if we want to look at those seven starts where he's done really well. Let's see if we can still justify stacking against him. In those seven starts, his skill interactive ERA is 4.73 with a 40% hard hit rate and a 39% fly ball rate. His striker rate is 15%. So enough hard contact, still not a lot of strikeouts, still a pretty high skill interactive ERA. It could be he has turned a corner. He's not letting up barrels. His FIP is really good, but he also could still regress. And the Dodgers are the kind of team that can bring regression in a hurry. So I hope that Gomber is fixed because, again, I'm rooting for him. I want him to do well once again. But I'm good with stacking the Dodgers against him just in case he is not. And we talked about Kike Hernandez in yesterday's show. Let's talk about Ahmed Rosario today. He's batting higher in the order than Hernandez is, and his results have trended up recently. But unlike what we discussed with Hernandez, Rosario's not backing up the surge with improved batted ball data. He's also not stealing a ton right now. So I'm still going to use Rosario because he's a value play on a slate where I need it, batting a, a, at a good part in the order for a great team. But I think if I'm stacking up this the, the value plays on this team, I'm probably going to go Chris Taylor above him. I think I go Chris Taylor one. I'm at Rosario two. 
And then I would go uh, with Kike Hernandez, number three, among just the value plays in this Dodgers lineup. Hernandez's salary is a lot lower at 24, which does help, but uh, Taylor's at 26, so I feel pretty firm putting him there. So still a bit skeptical of Rosario, um, despite the fact I'm still willing to use him given where he's batting in the order. Things to watch for tonight, other than Scooble, the other value play I'd at least consider is Paul Blackburn. His salary is $8,400. He's facing the Nationals, so they're a low strikeout matchup, but a good matchup overall. Blackburn does not let up hard contact, so honestly, his profile is kind of similar to Michael Lorenzen. Now, obviously, I'm not making a call there by any means, but uh, he does go deep in games. Blackburn does. I prefer Scooble over him for a reason, but I do think that Blackburn is at least worth considering for tonight. The Brewers are an interesting potential stack tonight. They're facing Michael Kopech, who is still struggling really badly with walks and letting up a ton of fly balls. Those issues can compound in a hurry because it can lead to like a three-run dinger. The walks mean fewer balls in play, which is annoying for stacking, but I want to at least look into Kopech because look into the Brewers because Kopech's issues are pretty pronounced and over a pretty large sample right now. The Royals are kind of similar just for different reasons. Facing Adam Wainwright, who it is a matchup we can definitely target, but it's not the best offense, obviously. So maybe they're more so like one-offs. M- MJ Melendez seems like he's finally starting to turn things on. So the Royals, the Brewers, alternatives for stacks beyond the top three we discussed. Dinger calls for this Friday slate. Let's try to head into the weekend on a high note here. The boring one, Matt Olson mentioned before that McGill lets up more fly balls to lefties than righties. It's Matt Olson. What else do you need to say? Matt Olson, the boring home run call for today. The fun one, I'm going to ride the G-Mon Choi. Again, the batting average is low, but he's hitting dingers, making barrels um, in a good spot tonight. Uh, so I think the G-Mon Choi power resurgence continues. And we'll go with Matt Olson and G-Mon Choi as the home run calls for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. If you want some thoughts on uh, pitching strikeout props for tonight, we're going to Pitching Ninja Rob Friedman on Covering the Spread later on today. Find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed along with FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page as well. Check out this podcast on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy podcast feed and on those feeds as well. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.